Hello everyone, my name is Miranda um, and happy Pride Month! Yay! It's June so it's Pride Month and I thought to celebrate I would do um, a little book, book recommendations video um, of books that are about or feature um, women in relationships with other women, be they lesbians, bisexual women, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna try and keep this quick because there's quite a few to get through. Um, and I'll also talk you through um, a couple of my TBR as well at the end. And yeah, let's just go for it. We're gonna start, no particular order, with one that I talked about a lot last year because I bloody loved it. And that is America Is Not The Heart by Elaine Castillo. Um, and this is so good, it's so beautiful. Um, so it's about a woman who moves um, back home to, um, no she doesn't, that's not, that's the exact opposite of what she does. So it's about a, f um, a woman who moves to the US um, from the Philippines having been disowned by her parents um, and it's just wonderful character studies, um, so many you know friendships and just lovely lovely writing about characters. There's not much story um, but I loved it, it's wonderful. Then we have Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Um, I wasn't totally in love with this but I know lots of people who who do really really love it um so this is about a um 16 year old girl who um is just about to have her kind of coming of age um celebration um and we sort of it flits back and forth in time um because um her mother didn't get to have her 16th celebrate um 16th birthday celebration um because she became pregnant with her daughter who is now having her party so you follow her parents um and kind of their lives and what they could have been and sort of yeah and go back and forth and forward in time um and it's just it's it's a lovely story it didn't stick with me particularly but um it is really beautifully written and i would recommend it then one of my absolute favorite books of last year was in the dream house by carmen maria machado um which is a memoir um about um Come room of Shadow's time in a um, abusive relationship with another woman. It's beautifully written, it's told in lots of different styles um, and she sort of looks at her relationship through lots of different lenses trying to understand what happened um, and it's just stunning. So many people have talked about this book, I'm sure you've heard of it um, if you've been here for any length of time and yeah it's it's wonderful, please read it. Next um, we have a book of poetry which is um, Life of the Party by Olivia Gatwood and the poems are sort of structured so that you go through um, Olivia Gatwood's life um, and in kind of chronological order and it's, I love her poetry so much obviously um, and I think yeah it's kind of, it's, it's really hard to describe poetry, it's you know feminist, it's beautiful, it's fun, it's kind of really like loving and I don't know full of like warmth um while also being really like cutthroat at times and yeah I just I love her and I love that book. I should also probably mention um Carmen Maria Machado's other book um which is called Her Body and Other Parties um which is a collection of short stories um I didn't love it quite as much as In the Dreamhouse um but it does have some wonderful stories in it and and some excellent ones about um sapphic women and um lesbian women and it's so good then we have a classic um which is the well of loneliness by radcliffe hall um so this is about um a woman who um grows up in the sort of um beginning very beginning of the 20th century um and she is basically just like a chronicle of her life um is a novel um but it follows her sort of throughout her life um and being set in the beginning of the 20th century it is quite sad um it's very sad and it's not very kind of hopeful um but yeah it follows her relationships with various different women and her kind of mostly her relationship with herself and yeah her, she goes to Paris for a bit it's it's really really beautiful um I, I love it so much um but it is very sad <laughs> next is Homegoing by Yajasi this is another book I've mentioned all the time um and this is a kind of family saga about um, women in a um, family. I think it's, no, it's not just women. It's just 
people generally. Um, it follows the descendants of two sisters um, who live in Ghana and um, yeah, there it goes down generation by generation um, and multiple characters in here are queer and it's honestly it's one of my favourite books ever. It's so good. It's just you get to know every character so beautifully in a short space of time. However, if you don't like moving on from characters very quickly um, and getting invested in people and then having to move on, you probably won't like this, but I love it. Then we have The Psychology of Time Travel, which is by Kate Mascarenas, I think. It's been a while since I read it um, and I can't 100% remember, but, um, but yeah, it's a, as you might guess, it's a sci-fi novel. So it follows, um, firstly, you have women, four women in the 60s who invent a time travel machine um, and then kind of, I think, I think one of them or all four of them, I can't remember, dies mysteriously um, or something happens and there's a kind of mystery, it's cool. And then you have a modern day setting um, and where time travel is like a big sort of business um, and you have people working in this like time travel sort of institute I suppose like providing time travel and researching time travel um, and yeah and then they try and solve this kind of mystery of what happened to these women. I didn't entirely love it but I found it so readable and so fun so um, yeah if you want like a fun sci-fi book about women there it is okay i just looked it up and um one of the scientists does not die none of the scientists die just one has a um breakdown about kind of what they're doing and tries to jeopardize the project um of creating a time travel machine so then we have um girls paper and fire by natasha nagan which is a ya fantasy book which i don't read that many of um but this one i did really enjoy so this is about a um girl who goes to a sort of well I, she basically goes to become like a concubine to um this you know like evil demon king person um like girls are chosen to go um they don't have a choice um and there she meets another girl who's also a concubine um slash like you know prisoner and they start a relationship and it's really i love the world but world building um i thought that was wonderful it was really like um i don't know just well written and um well sort of plotted and paced um so yeah if you're in the mood for something like that would recommend then another very you know popular book is girl woman other by bernadine Evaristo. so this is about um several um women and um i think one non-binary character um and they all are related in some way but it basically follows um each one has a chapter to, dedicated to them um and again some of them are straight some of them aren't it's a good time it's beautiful it's one of my favorite books of all time so can't go wrong really can you next we have the confessions of franny langton by sarah collins um which is historical fiction about a um young girl slash woman who is well she at the beginning you have her trial um she's being put on trial for the murder of her um master and mistress um whose house she works in it's also mentioned in the trial that she had a relationship with um this female employer in whose house she was working um and yeah it kind of goes from there mystery unravels it's a good time lots of people loved it a lot more than i do um so do with that what you will more non-fiction we have the favorite by ophelia field ophelia field this is what the film the favorite was based on um i love the film um if you haven't seen it you 100% should um but basically it's about um queen anne um who was queen late 1700s maybe i can't remember exactly and she had a lesbian lover um the duchess of marlborough i think 
and yeah so the book is kind of about their relationship um more about the kind of like political side of it but their relationship was very political and very up and down and um yeah it's it's incredibly interesting and one of the most readable history books I've ever read. I think it's technically an, or a biography of the Duchess of Marlborough um but it's it's yeah it's great it's really it's so interesting and if you love the film like I do I would really recommend the book. Next up more YA is You Should See Me in a Crown. I think it's by Leia Johnson. I will put it on the screen and we'll see if I'm right. Um yeah this is a why a novel about a girl in high school in the US um, and she is, I can't remember if she's a lesbian or bisexual, I can't remember, but um, she has, it basically, it's kind of romance and follows like her developing relationship with another girl in her school. Um, but also she has um, quite intense anxiety and um, is dealing with lots of other issues around her family as well so it's, it's it's a very like nuanced book um with a lot going on and i really enjoyed the kind of escapism of it and also the characters were really really well fleshed out so um yeah it's a really good like nice light um ya book um i mean light in the sense that it's easy to read um but it also it, it has kind of serious interesting topics without being incredibly dark um and yeah i just really enjoyed it another short story collection is secret lives of church ladies by disha filial um this is so good i listened to this on audio um i think last year and yeah it's just wonderful um it's kind of what it says on the tin which is a bunch of stories about um women who go to church and their sort of relationship with religion um but also with like them their families and their like own identity and it's just it's so beautiful it's so good and i think only one of the stories features a gay couple it's it's beautiful and i really really loved it um again it's, it's kind of like little snapshots of characters which i just adore um so if you like that too is really good. Then there is um, Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth, which is a kind of, I think it's, it's not, no, it's definitely not YA. I think you might call it like new adult. It's about generally a kind of mystery curse around this school where several girls died in kind of weird, creepy circumstances um, at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and then it follows in the modern day um, three women who are involved in um, making a film about um, those events and the school. Um, and yeah, it's very spooky. It's very um, kind of, it's very long. It's so gay. Um, there are so many queer women in it and it's really fun, kind of dark academia, spooky, then we have Girls Against God by Jenny Haval. Um, this is translated, um, I think, from Swedish, and it's very weird. I didn't 100% get it. It didn't quite click with me, but I know people who absolutely adore it. Um, so basically, it's about it's it's kind of I think it's narrated by or about um, a girl. She's in like this band. Um, with some other women and talks a lot about like art and hatred and anger. It's basically no plot, no characters, just vibes. Um, a lot of, a lot of vibes. It's also a lot about film um, and some parts of it feel very much like you are watching a film, um, a kind of weird film where you don't know what's going on. Next, Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Um, I read this earlier this year. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's about a woman who um, takes erotic photos of men um, and um, sells them to um, and displays them in art galleries um, and essentially she kind of goes a bit off the rails um, and it gets quite dark 
but she also is a bisexual woman um so she has relationships with women as well in the book so it's very interesting with like sexuality and um kind of the male gaze slash the female gaze and kind of subverting um how people are looked at um but also it's very funny i mean i found it really funny the narrator is so horrible but so funny like she's kind of she's funny in the sense that she says horrible things about people that are kind of true even though they are awful and yeah it's it's i just i just enjoyed it another book i read pretty recently and i talked about in my last video um is the transition baby by tori peters um so this is about um it follows mainly um a trans woman called reese whose ex um ames who was a trans woman and then detransitioned um has um got another woman pregnant um and ames approaches reese basically saying do you want to parent this child with me um and yeah it's very much about womanhood um being a trans woman motherhood and the connection between womanhood and motherhood and it's so interesting oh my gosh it's wonderful it's it's just so detailed and so observant and excellent so next we have um sister outsider by audrey lord um audrey lord was a lesbian this is a kind of collected version of her essays speeches research writings musings um not all of it is about queerness quite a lot of it is um and yeah i i, th I mean obviously her her like memoirs um are going to be probably more about her relationship this is more like theoretical essays quite a lot of it um but yeah it's still very much worth reading and she is amazing so next is another book that i read very recently and that is great circle by maggie shipstead um this is about um actually again it's about a historical setting and then the making of a film in the few in the present day so it's about a um pilot called marion who lived in the sort of well it follows her life from like the 1920s to the 1960s um and she tried to circumnavigate the world um from pole to pole um but got very close and then crashed and disappeared um and then again you have a modern day actress who you follow who is playing her in a film adaptation this is lovely features a bisexual woman and is great it's so good i don't know i find it really hard to describe this book because it's literally just an incredibly well written story and i love it okay so very quickly books featured on my tbr um include exciting times by anita dolan um this is about i think a woman who moves from ireland to hong kong it's gay in some way not entirely sure how um love and other thought experiments by sophie ward this is about two women in a relationship um who something weird about regarding an insect happens and then they kind of have an argument and then all of their arguments are like psychological or philosophical philosophical like case studies i don't know it sounds weird i'm into it um then we have rapture by carolyn duffy i have several of carolyn duffy's um poetry collections on my tbr because i love her poetry she's great um and yeah she's a lesbian we love her tipping the velvet by sarah waters i want to read everything that sarah waters has written pretty much because she sounds just right on my street can't believe i still haven't read anything by her um this is the only book that i own um because it's about theatre and i really want to read it i mean historical fiction lesbians theatre sign me up i don't know i feel like books about um you know um women loving other women in especially like literary fiction um kind of get lost a bit and um there's a lot of focus on like um 
YA books when it comes to Pride recommendations. So I thought I'd do this with all genres, not all genres, but lots of genres, um, to kind of bring some to your attention, maybe some books that you've heard of but didn't realise had um, sapphic women in them. And yes, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry if I've been talking very fast. Um, I wanted to get through these books um, in a decent amount of time so this video isn't hugely long, um, but also I have dinner waiting for me and I'm hungry. So hopefully I will see you very soon um, and yeah, stay groovy. I guess. Welcome to Squidward's Kiki Land. <laughs>